before we proceed on our discussion, let me present to you our objectives. At the end of this video, you should be able to define geometric means. Solve the common ratio using two non-consecutive terms. Determine the geometric means. Define geometric series. Solve the sum of a given geometric sequence. Let's get started. Geometric means are the terms between any two non-consecutive terms of a given geometric sequence. Suppose that we have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5 as our geometric sequence. The geometric means are a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. So we have three geometric means. Another example is 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96. The two non-consecutive terms are 3 and 96. The terms in between these two non-consecutive terms are the geometric means, which are 6, 12, 24, and 48. Let's have an example. Insert two geometric means between 5 and 135. Since we're looking for two geometric means, we have four terms in all. We can substitute 5 for the first term, or a sub 1, and 135 for the last term, or a sub 4. Then, we can now solve the geometric means, which are a sub 2 and a sub 3. To determine the geometric means, we need to solve first the common ratio. To solve the common ratio, we can use the geometric sequence formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to quantity n minus 1 or the simplified formula r is equal to n minus 1 root of a sub n over a sub 1. Since the common ratio is unknown, we have r is equal to unknown. The first term is 5, so we have a sub 1 is equal to 5 and the last term is 135, so a sub n is equal to 135. Also, n is equal to 4 since we have 4 terms. Another thing that we need to consider is if n is an even number or if n is odd number. If n is even number, we have one value of the common ratio. And if n is odd number, we have two values for the common ratio. Since n is equal to 4, therefore, we have an even number and we have one value of common ratio. We can now solve the common ratio. Writing the equation a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. We can now substitute the given values 135 for a sub n, 5 for a sub 1, and 4 for n. So the resulting equation is 135 is equal to 5 times r raised to 4 minus 1. We can now divide 5 both sides of the equation to eliminate 5 on the right side of the equation. So the resulting equation is 135 over 5 is equal to r raised to 4 minus 1. Simplifying the exponent, we have 135 over 5 is equal to r cubed. Simplifying the left side of the equation, 135 divided by 5 is equal to 27, so we have 27 is equal to r cubed. Extract the root by getting the cube root of both sides of the equation. The cube root of r cubed is equal to r, and the cube root of 27 is equal to 3, since 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27. So, we have r is equal to 3 or the common ratio is equal to 3. Let's see if we can get the same answer if we're going to use the simplified formula. Writing the equation, r is equal to n minus 1 root of a sub n over a sub 1. By substitution, we have r is equal to 4 minus 1 root of 135 over 5. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. Radical sign, 135 divided by 5 is equal to 27. Again, the cube root of 27 
is 3. Therefore, we can say that the common ratio is 3. Since we already know the value of the common ratio, we can now solve the geometric means or the value of a sub 2 and a sub 3. R is equal to 3, meaning we multiply 3 in each term to get the next term. To find a sub 2, we have a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 times r, wherein a sub 1 is 5 and r is equal to 3. 5 times 3 is 15, so a sub 2 is equal to 15. To find a sub 3, we have a sub 3 is equal to a sub 2 times r, wherein a sub 2 is 15 and r is equal to 3. 15 times 3 is equal to 45. So the third term is 45. Therefore, we can say that the geometric means are 15 and 45. The first geometric mean is 15 and the second geometric mean is 45. Let's have another example. Insert three geometric means between 3 and 243. Since we have three geometric means, we have five terms in all. We can now substitute 3 for the first term or a sub 1. 243 for the last term or a sub 5. Then we can now solve the geometric means which are a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. To identify geometric means, we need to solve first the common ratio by using the geometric sequence formula or the simplified formula. Since we're looking for the common ratio, we have r is equal to unknown. The first term is 3, so we have a sub 1 is equal to 3. The last term is 243, so we have a sub n is equal to 243. Also, there are 5 terms, so we have n is equal to 5. We also need to consider if n is an even number or an odd number. If n is even number, we have one value of r, and if n is odd number, we have two values of r. In this example, our n is 5, so we have an odd number. Therefore, we can say that we have two values of the common ratio. Let us now solve the common ratio. Writing the equation, we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. By substitution, we have 243 is equal to 3 times r raised to 5 minus 1. We can now divide both sides of the equation by 3 to eliminate 3 on the right side of the equation. So we have 243 over 3 is equal to r raised to 5 minus 1. Simplifying the exponent, we have 243 over 3 is equal to r raised to the 4th power. Simplifying the left side of the equation, 243 divided by 3 is equal to 81. So we have 81 is equal to r raised to the fourth power. Extract the root by getting the fourth root of both sides of the equation. The fourth root of r raised to the fourth power is equal to r. And the fourth root of 81 is equal to 3 since we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 81. Also, we have negative 3 since we have negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is equal to 81. Therefore, the common ratio is positive negative 3. Let's see if we can get the same answer if we're going to use the simplified formula. Writing the equation, r is equal to n minus 1 root of a sub n over a sub 1. By substitution, we have r is equal to 5 minus 1 root of 243 divided by 3. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Then we have the radical sign. 243 divided by 3 is equal to 81. And the fourth root of 81 is again positive negative 3. Therefore, the common ratio is positive and negative 3. Since we have two values for the common, thus we have two sets of geometric means. r is equal to 3 and r is equal to negative 3. The geometric means are a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. 
For the first set, r is equal to 3, meaning we multiply 3 in each term to get the next term. To find a sub 2, we have 3 times 3, and that is 9. 9 times 3 is equal to 27. 27 times 3 is equal to 81. To check if our answer is correct, 81 times 3 is 243. For the second set, we have r is equal to negative 3, meaning we multiply negative 3 in each term to get the next term. To find a sub 2, we have 3 times negative 3, and that is negative 9. Negative 9 times negative 3 is equal to positive 27. 27 times negative 3 is equal to negative 81. To check if our answer is correct, negative 81 times negative 3 is equal to 243. Therefore, we can conclude that the common with the common difference of positive 3, the geometric means are 9, 27, and 81. And with the common difference of negative 3, the geometric means are negative 9, 27, negative 81. Since you already know about geometric sequence and geometric means, we can now proceed with geometric series. Geometric series is the sum of the terms in a geometric sequence. For example, we have a geometric sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. The geometric series is S sub n is equal to 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. Or simply, S sub n is equal to 126. Let's have an example. What is the sum of the geometric sequence 9, 27, 81 and the pattern continues if there are 8 terms? We can use the formula for geometric series. The first formula is S sub n is equal to E sub 1, quantity r raised to n minus 1, all over r minus 1. This is the formula that we're going to use if we're dealing with finite geometric series. The second formula is S is equal to E sub 1 over 1 minus R. This is the formula that we're going to use if we're dealing with infinite geometric series. With the condition where the absolute value of the common ratio should be less than 1. Since we're looking for the sum of the 8 terms, therefore, this problem is an example of finite geometric series. The formula that we're going to use is S sub n is equal to A sub 1 times R raised to n minus 1 all over R minus 1. n is equal to 8 since we have 8 terms. A sub 1 is equal to 9. And R is equal to the second term, 27, divided by the first term, 9. 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3. We can now supply substitution, substitute the given values. So we have S sub 8 is equal to 9, quantity 3 raised to 8 minus 1, all over 3 minus 1. We can now simplify 3 raised to 8, which is equal to 6,561. Then, we will solve 6,561 minus 1, and that is... 6560. We can now simplify the numerator. 9 times 6560 is equal to 59,040. The denominator 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. Last step, divide 59,040 by 2. And the answer is 29,520. Let's have another example. Find the sum of the infinite geometric sequence 1, 1 5th, 1 over 25, 1 over 125, and the pattern continues. This problem is an example of infinite geometric series. So the formula that we're going to use is S is equal to E sub 1 over 1 minus R with the given condition where the absolute value of the common ratio should be less than 1. N is equal to infinite a sub 1 is equal to 1, r is equal to a sub 2 
over a sub 1, wherein a sub 2 is 1 fifth and a sub 1 is 1. So we have 1 and 5 times 1 is equal to 5. So the common ratio is 1 fifth. Since the common ratio is less than 1, therefore we can now proceed on our next step, which is substitution. So we have S is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 fifth. We can rewrite the denominator in the form 5 over 5 minus 1 fifth since 5 over 5 is also equal to 1. Then simplify the denominator 5 fifth minus 1 fifth is equal to 4 fifth. So the resulting equation is S is equal to 1 all over 4 fifth. By simplifying, we have 5 over 4 times 1, which is 4. So the sum of the infinite geometric sequence is 5 over 4. Let's have another example. Find the sum of the infinite geometric sequence 4, 12, 36, and the pattern continues. This problem is also an example of infinite geometric series. So we're going to use S is equal to A sub 1 over 1 minus R with the condition where the absolute value of the common ratio should be less than 1. N is equal to infinite, A sub 1 is equal to 4, and R is equal to A sub 2 over A sub 1. Where an A sub 2 is 12 and A sub 1 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So the common ratio is 3. In the following condition, wherein the absolute value of the common ratio should be less than 1, since 3 is greater than 1, therefore 3 is not less than 1. We can conclude that the sum of infinite geometric sequence 4, 12, 36 does not exist. much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something today. Please consider like and share this video to your classmates and friends. This is Sir Josh, signing off.